The NBA math trade deadline primer continues with a look at the New Orleans Pelicans. New Orleans has been up and down this entire season and just recently started to click in their lineups with two big men, all-stars DeMarcus Cousin and Anthony Davis. New Orleans was banking on their brutish big men duo as a great strength and mismatch for the team against all of the others in the NBA that are switching towards more small ball type lineups. Sitting in the thick of things in the Western Conference, it was expected that general manager Dell Demps would make some sort of move to surround both Cousins and Davis with a little bit more talent. But then, on Friday night, Cousins went down with what is believed to be a season-ending Achilles rupture. That injury is not only costly to the Pelicans and their playoff chances, but also to Cousins, who is due to be an unrestricted free agent in July. With his health in flux, no one knows what to expect from the organization at the trade deadline. As of now, the Pelicans project to have about $30 million before they hit the luxury tax next season. Because such a large chunk of that was due to go to Cousins, the team projected to be over the luxury tax next season. Because of that, it became an organizational imperative to get beneath the luxury tax this season. Pelicans have struggled to field a competitive roster around Cousins and Davis while remaining under the tax, and now are less than a million dollars away from exceeding that luxury threshold. Every decision they make here at the deadline revolves around Cousins and what they plan to do with him long term. The best course of action, both for the organization and for Cousins, might be to sign a one-year deal next season that keeps the team underneath the luxury tax. Of course, the plan would then be to sign Cousins to a long-term extension next summer. The biggest weights bogging down the Pelicans' cap situation both this season and the long term are the poor contracts of center Omer Ashik, swingman Solomon Hill, who has yet to log a minute this season, and Alexis Agensa, whom the Pelicans do not expect to have returned from injury this year. Ashik and Ajinsa in particular are dead weight that is very difficult to move unless they are able to attach a first round pick with it. Over the long term, if the Pelicans do plan on making the Cousins and Davis front court work, they're going to have to find ways to surround both of them with more perimeter shooting. As it stands on their roster right now, New Orleans has a lot of driving and slashing playmakers, many of which don't have enough spacing around the perimeter to leverage their strengths. New Orleans has three trade exceptions that will all but expire if they're not used at the trade deadline. However, all three are useless if the team still wants to remain underneath the luxury tax. That would mean the only source of upgrading this roster would be attaching outgoing draft picks, mainly first rounders, with poor contracts to provide both cap relief and a talent infusion. General Manager Dell Demps has proven in the past that he is willing to part with first round picks at the trade deadline. Huge downside to this though, on their current roster, Anthony Davis is the only player that was once picked by the Pelicans. Whatever course of action Demps takes, he must tread very carefully.